This is the Roaring Elephant podcast for the 18th of December 2018. A podcast about Apache Hadoop and the surrounding ecosystem for anybody working with or investigating big data and advanced analytics. My name is John, and here is my know-it-all co-host, Dave. Hey, hey, hey. Enjoying the Chainsaw Massacre in the background. <laughs> oh, yes, well, I waited for the person to be quiet, and there he goes again. So, yeah, there's some <laughs> uh, pretty big nature devastation going on outside my window, so s- apologies for that, but nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I'm not can't you just open out. the window and shout hey recording here <laughs> uh, no you'd be surprised how no. little effect that has on people that are communing with terrible. nature terrible terrible <laughs> anyway I won't be talking much anyway because we have an interview we do indeed so we have uh, Paolo Ranieri um, from Noage who is uh, reaching out to us all the way from uh, the Como area of Italy to talk to us about Noage, also uh, previously known as Spago BI, uh, an open source BI, an analytics suite that integrates with big data. So, uh, yeah, it, an interesting conversation, I think. Yeah, I mean, the reason we have it is because you saw a demo or something of the product and you were intrigued by it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not the sort of thing you hear about very often. The BI and analytics suites just tend to be mm-hmm. proprietary things. And I, I don't understand, well, I have some suspicions as to why, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the, I think it's far better to hear it from someone that actually has a, a clue about this sort of stuff. So uh, let's, yeah. uh, let's link into the interview. Let's uh, have Paolo talk about Noich. So we're joined to get today by a special guest from Noage. Uh, Paolo, welcome to the podcast. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Hi, Paolo. So you come from, uh, or you come from a, a fairly interesting sort of business that I came across quite some time ago, um, back when the project was called Spagio BI, but, uh, Perhaps introduce yourself to the the audience and let them know a little bit about you, where you came from, and and what you're doing now. Uh, yes, um, the project now the project now is called uh, uh, No Age, and yes, it was born as Spago BI. Spago mm-hmm. BI was born in 2004, uh, six months before Pentaho, just to have a clue, uh, and it was totally open source and open standard. And uh, uh, the same is for Knowledge. So it's uh, uh, a BI suite. So it's a business intelligence suite, uh, mm-hmm. full suite with full capabilities. Uh, and uh, it has a lot of years of background because 2004 is not uh, yesterday. Um, and yes, this is an open source BI suite. Fantastic. And this is um, pretty unique, at least as far as I'm aware. I'm I'm not aware of any other sort of open source BI suite of this, at least of the same sort of level. Is there is there anything else out there? Uh, we know that uh, I, I love the open source world, and I know I know a lot of uh, BI tools. Uh, or uh, uh, softwares uh, in the in the open source world, but yes, what we can say is that uh, I don't know, for example, Kibana or whatever. But um, mm. yes, we can say that uh, uh, probably since Pentaho has now been acquired from Hitachi, uh, mm-hmm. I think that uh, the only full suite BI uh, tool you can find in the open source world that is still open source and open standard for for real, it's uh, Knowledge. Uh, I think. It, it's true. And so I'm kind of curious as to what, why you think that this is. So, I mean, for me, the, the whole sort of BI and analytics space is, is critical to getting value out of, of big data in many cases. And yet, you know, big data itself is a very sort of uh, very lucky to have such a rich ecosystem of open source tools and technology. Yet the, the BI space, at least in, in my mind, is is dominated by you know people like Tableau and Click and Power BI you know all sort of in the 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 old school proprietary sort of uh, sense. Why why do you think that is? Why do you think that uh, Knowledge is is uh, sort of one of one of a very sort of few sets of of tools in that sort of space? 
Uh, yes, those tools are uh, uh, great for sure. Uh, I, I, I used to, uh, let me say, love my competitors uh, <laughs> as because uh, we are open source. So, uh, we, yes, we are competitors, but uh, since you can use Knowledge for free, uh, if, you, if you stay under the AGPL license, uh, it's not real competition. But yes, uh, you can use a lot of them uh, Click, Tableau, Pentaho, uh, SAP VO, uh, Power BI, whatever. Um, but uh, yes, you can find in no age the same uh, stability and the same uh, number of features. It's very, very well spread in, in terms of uh, uh, things you can do in the business analytics world. Uh, but uh, yes, the, one of the core uh, added value for, from, from my side is uh, to be open source and open standard. And we like to follow up with uh, something like Hortoworks and Cloudera just to be uh, certified with everything. Thing uh, mm -hmm. we we now we now obviously heard about the the merge between Cloudera and Hortobook, so we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, uh, we still uh, we still want to follow up on the big data world because obviously um, I think every business intelligence and business analytics tool have the same uh, problem with big data, and the problem is to uh, let the uh, analytics. Uh, really uh, be uh, fast and easy to to use because obviously uh, since with big data you have the big part of data uh, it's difficult to give a, a real uh, uh, live experience on on data so every tool every software tries to uh, set up some uh, uh, shortcuts to uh, give to the end user a fast experience even if on the background you have a lot of lot of data and uh, for example when i was to the um, to the Orton works summit uh, data works summit uh, last year or this year yes in uh, in may or whatever in dublin in berlin um, mm -hmm. it was cool to see how many uh, possible uh, uh, partnership we can do with many of the softwares that are uh, helping uh, software like us to manage more data at the same time from different nodes on the clouds, for example. Uh, this is a very good path to follow and try to speed up the end user experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you mentioned that uh, that Knowledge came from Spaco BI. Um, you know what was the initial sort of um, the initial founding of, of of this technology? You know where where did that initial sort of um, gelling of the, the the first founders come from? What was their sort of vision around this? Yes, yeah, so Spago BI was uh, uh, was born and um, as an open source uh, spin off, let me say, of the company called uh, Engineering Engineria Informatica. Uh, that is a system integrator from Italy that is now very well spread into the world. And uh, mm -hmm. I think they had a very good idea because in that moment, uh, 2004, it was really not uh, uh, easy to see the, the, the vision and the future of open source. You know, now it's easy to see that uh, yeah. you, you find uh, uh, Microsoft that is buying, uh, has, has bought uh, GitHub, you, you find uh, IBM with Red Hat and whatever. But as we all remember, Microsoft, uh, no, no far than 2011, uh, Microsoft said that uh, uh, Linux was a cancer. So uh, <laughs> in 2004, it wasn't so, uh, so easy to understand the potential of the open source world, uh, nor the potential of the business analytics world. Uh, I think in 2004, nobody was talking about business analytics. Everybody was talking about business intelligence, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, engineering developed this uh, Spago BI suite because uh, obviously uh, it was cool for the open community and it was obviously uh, good for them because since they were and they are system integrator, it's cool to have a BI suite uh, uh, inside to, to be used uh, in the projects. Uh, but then uh, they... Re they um, they understood that the community was very good uh, and uh, Spago BI was very well downloaded from the world. Uh, and uh, in, in 2016, they decided to start to uh, switch the uh, licensing. So they uh, start to act uh, 
as uh, uh, Red Hat did. Okay, so mm -hmm. before No Age, so when it was Spago BI in 2016, uh, you have had only one license, uh, totally open source and free and open standard. Uh, now uh, they changed the name into No Age. So now uh, you can find only No Age as a supported tool. Uh, they changed the name, but the software is, uh, uh, let me say, the same because uh, uh, if you look at the versions of the softwares, uh, Spago BI um, arrives to the um, five version, and then you have mm -hmm. No Age six as the first version. So uh. it's to uh, let the people understand that it's the same team, same project, but they changed the name because they wanted to uh, separate the, uh, uh, let me say, the vision, the image of the brand, uh, because now you have two licensing models. Uh, you have the uh, free and open source and open standard community edition. Uh, that is not a toy. It's not only something you can use only for testing project, uh, the community edition is a full suite. You can use it for real uh, for real uh, live project and you can also do business with it. Uh, but obviously you have to remain inside the uh, AGPL uh, version 3. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there is the uh, enterprise edition. So if you want uh, some more maintenance, if you want some uh, particular enterprise features, uh, obviously you can uh, pay for the enterprise edition. But what I want to, to tell you is it's that uh, what I love of, of this project, uh, I can tell you that I'm here since one year, so I'm still um, really uh, agnostic about the project, but I love the fact that they didn't insert in the Enterprise Edition uh, all the business feature. Uh, you can do business even with the Community Edition. What is true is that in the Enterprise Edition you find uh, features that uh, really allows you to go faster, let me say. Uh, a good example is that uh, uh, if you want to migrate your project uh, from uh, your server to another server uh, with the community edition, you can, obviously, but you have to do it by yourself. In the enterprise edition, there is one feature that is the uh, server manager that allows you to uh, migrate all the project with few clicks. So. Um, it's not about uh, doing business. It's about being faster, let me say, or, um, yeah, save the time. Got it. Got it. So knowledge seems to be um, arranged into sort of a different set of, of modules that, that people can can choose from depending on sort of what what sort of functionality they're looking for can you sort of give us a give the audience a quick um, overview of what those what those modules are and you know do, i mean do people need all of the modules can they just pick and choose just the specific ones they want how does that work uh yes this is another thank you for this question because this is another part that i i'm i love let me see because uh, even if you want to pay for the enterprise edition, so once you choose to pay for something, uh, Knowledge tells you that uh, we, we don't want from you money for something that you doesn't need, that you don't need. So uh, if you are a project that uh, only wants to make a static enterprise reporting with uh, Jasper or BERT, uh, you only have to purchase the enterprise reporting module and not all the full suite. If you want to only add some uh, geographic and location intelligence uh, features, maybe you can only want to buy the modules about location intelligence. So uh, you, have, you can see that uh, um, we have six modules that are BD, Big Data, SI, Smart Intelligence, ER, Enterprise Reporting, PM, Performance Management, and uh, PA, Predictive Analytics, and LI, Location Intelligence. So uh, with the BD module, that is the one we are talking, going to talk about uh, this, this day, is the big data module. So it's about um, uh, uh, using the uh, sources uh, coming from big data world and making, obviously, cockpits and dashboards and uh, OLAP and whatever. Uh, smart intelligence is similar because it enables you to create cockpit, create reports, create uh, um, cubes and whatever, but uh, it's not for big data world. So you can uh, use the smart intelligence module once you don't have to uh, use Hadoop, for example. Uh, the ER, Enterprise Reporting, is the uh, smallest uh, um, 
module and it's only about creating the static reports and schedule them and send it into the emails in your organization for example so you create your BERT or Jasper reports and you can spread it into your organization uh, predictive maintenance it's about uh, let me say KPI okay so once you have to measure and uh, and keep track of on, on something uh, you can use the predictive maintenance module and create your own uh, cockpits with uh, gauge charts, for example, and uh, have the performance management module. And uh, uh, that is basically about KPI. So it's not about only visualizing the KPI in uh, maybe some gauge charts or whatever, but it's also about uh, the engine behind the KPI. So into knowledge, uh, you can find uh, the engine that is based on Mondrian, I think, uh, that enables you to calculate live your KPI and keep track on them and, uh, and see what happened. Uh, then there is the PA module, predictive analytics. That is very, very cool, I think, uh, especially if you have in your organization uh, some uh, data scientists uh, that are very good in uh, using Python or R. Uh, and then you have your, I don't know, um, marketing managers that want to make predictive analytics, but they don't, uh, they are not able to use R or Python. In this case, you can insert your um, uh, R or Python algorithms into knowledge as a sort of uh, um, catalog of functionalities. And then your marketing manager can use knowledge on the data set that he can find and say, okay, play this algorithm into this data set and uh, show me the outputs based on the R algorithms. And with that output, uh, they can be able to create their own dashboards. So basically your manager, marketing manager is uh, now able to make predictive analytics dashboards even uh, without coding nothing. So it's very interesting, I think. Uh, even if, because you can, uh, uh, let me say, um, link together different uh, functions of uh, predictive analytics and use the output of one function as an input for another and whatever inside noise and coming to the end of the uh, of this chain, you will uh, create your own, your own uh, dashboard by yourself, all without coding nothing. So it's it's very interesting. Uh, into the predictive analytics model, you can find also another interesting features that is uh, the what if cube that uh, uh, is, um, as, as, as you know, the OLAP, uh, OLAP cube. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sort of uh, OLAP cube, but it enables you to click inside the single cell uh, and uh, um, uh, reproduce, uh, uh, write um, a function. For example, you click on uh, the cell that is uh, uh, the cell about uh, uh, the sales uh, of this quarter and about this kind of product. You click inside the cell and say, okay, plus 10%. So you are making a scenario, okay, and you and you and you are asking to the OLAP, what if this cell will be plus ten percent the next year, for example? And once you click the enter button, you will be you will see that all the other uh, numbers of the uh, cube will be um, edited in relation to this edit, to this uh, customization. So you are able to make some scenarios in very few clicks, and you can obviously uh, make the versions. So you have your cube. You make the version plus 10%, version plus 2%, version plus 30%, and you can compare the version as a variable in few minutes. If you do it with uh, Excel or whatever, obviously you will lose a lot of hours of work. Uh, then I think I'm missing only one, uh, location intelligence, I think. Uh, that is mm -hmm. uh, obviously about location intelligence, uh, but not only about uh, maps, uh, uh, or maybe not only about uh, geographic maps, so it's not about only, um, I don't know, uh, Google Data Street or whatever, but you will be able also to uh, visualize data in a special mode uh, by using SVG uh, pictures. So, for example, let me say you are a manager of uh, a data center and you have your uh, data on the performance of the racks uh, into the single rooms uh, on a big table, but you want to visualize these performance in another way. So you will be able, for example, to uh, build your own uh, picture layer by layer of your whole data center, then of your single room, then of, of your single rack and whatever. And you will uh, see, um, you, you will be able to assign 
to a single part of your uh, picture, a color or a number uh, based on the data you have. But in this case, you will see them into a sort of map that you built. So you are visualizing this data, the performance of the server, for example, uh, in a special way, even if uh, from this data you are not getting any X or Y or uh, coordinate, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so you could have like a, is, a heat map built up that would be, first of all, looking at your data center, you drill into that, it would look at the racks, you drill into that again, you'd see the individual servers in the rack and, and the sort of, as you say, the performance characteristics yes, against uh, each of them. Yeah, so uh, not only not only a heat map. Uh, let me say it's not uh, a chart that you use as a map. It's uh, um, uh, it's like you are creating your own layer, uh, your own map uh, drawn by you. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. it's a picture, SVG picture, and then uh, it's not uh, it's not like a heat map. You can create a heat map, obviously, if you want. But the cool part is that you can also uh, draw uh, a tree if you want, or a flower. Uh, okay? okay, and uh, color the single uh, leaves of the flower uh, based on the number you get. So. Um, it's a, it's a, I think the customization is uh, powerful. Excellent. Okay, so uh, this is an overview of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the obviously, as, as you mentioned, the the big data one is one of the ones that we're sort of interested in. Um, I had a quick look at this earlier, and I was uh, trying to trying to sort of get a bit more information about. Um, sort of which which of the big data sort of ecosystem pieces can people use as um, as data sources into this? Okay, uh, let me say, uh, knowledge uh, gives the opportunity to work with with big data and traditional data. Obviously, the mm -hmm. the biggest part is that you can federate data sets. Uh, to build different analytics, uh, such as uh, uh, static reports, map, uh, networks, uh, views, uh, interactive cockpits, and whatever. Uh, but the cool part is that you can federate together the big data world and uh, the uh, traditional world, if you want. So it mm -hmm. enables you to create a layer um, that we call a universal data set. And into this layer, your end user will be able to create a uh, query by example, uh, data sources is only for himself without coding. Um, it's uh, the user can freely explore uh, his own data using uh, this drag and drop query builder uh, or having immediate insight thanks to the advanced analytics visualization if he wants. Uh, now, Knowledge is certified on Cloudera, but we've worked a lot to be certified as Orthoworks uh, also. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. we are waiting because we, we have to see, obviously, what's the, the future of this merge and acquisition uh, between Cloudera and Orthoworks. Uh, mm -hmm. We are certified uh, on uh, MapR uh, data platform. Uh, and then, obviously, we have the integration with Apache Spark, and uh, we are also, uh, in this case, a uh, Databricks certified application. So this is the uh, the world in which knowledge now uh, is uh, could be used, uh, also with Spark, obviously. Uh, and then, uh, together with the uh, potentiality to use R and Python, you can, uh, let me say, close the cycle uh, of uh, the circle of uh, of the data big data world. Actually, so you, you mentioned that uh, the the Spark support and Spark certification. That was one thing that I was kind of interested in. So, um, what would uh, what would Knowledge do with Spark? I mean, would it sort of be able to just you know talk to the the native sort of uh, data frames, or is it um, can it import Spark models? You know, what what does it actually do with uh, with Spark? Uh, I, as far as I know, since I'm not a technical uh, man, I, I can tell you that you can really use Deep uh, Spark uh, as, as you wish, uh, together with Knowledge. And that's because uh, we work a lot with our colleagues about big data. Uh, Knowledge is inside uh, the BU of data and analytics, that is a very big business unit about data and analytics in the engineering world. Um, so we used to collaborate a lot with our colleagues uh, on based on Spark, uh, and I know that they can do a lot of things. But I'm not so technical to tell you uh, how much deep you can do. But uh, no I know that they no are using it a lot. Mm 
I'm sorry for this, okay. but you can uh, have more information if you write me for sure. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, may- maybe we can have a, d- depending on our audience's uh, feedback, maybe we can have a follow-on session with uh, with yes, you and of one course. of your technical colleagues as well. So of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's move into kind of a slightly different area. Yeah, um, when you were sort of doing the earlier explanation of the modules, uh, one of the things you mentioned is this concept of cockpits. Um, so talk to us a little bit about you know dashboarding and cockpits and how how those things kind of fit together. Is this something unique to Knowledge? Uh, okay, yes, uh, the cockpit word is cool because uh, it's all web. Yeah, let me say, Noage is all uh, web based, so it works with uh, every device uh, and every environment. Yeah. Um, the cool part is that uh, we like to continuously talk about cockpit and not dashboards because uh, you have this uh, web designer, okay, in which you have this white. Uh, um, uh, empty page uh, and inside there you can insert uh, any widget you want and you can find there a lot of uh, interesting widget not only charts so you can have for example the text widget that could be related to uh, a live uh, text uh, uh, recognition okay uh, you have obviously the image widget so you can insert any image you can you can uh, be able to imagine okay uh, obviously behind everything you will be able to customize all your visualization thanks to the html and css so it's very easy to be um, to create cool visualization if you need it because as, as i like to say um, it's not always needed to be cool because many times uh, if you are not doing a project that uh, um uh, is going to uh, be seen as a communication project or whatever. Maybe uh, you only want uh, real numbers, and uh, uh, let me say you are you are not interested in uh, into the shades of colors of your title or whatever. <laughs> let me say, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, don't don't uh, don't misunderstand me. I, I love the data visualization, and I am the one that says that obviously anytime you show data, you have to show them in a way that people jo- both enjoy and understand. But if this uh, cockpit uh, must be seen from uh, your uh, uh, IT technical that only wants to follow the performance of the server. Uh, obviously, it must be uh, usable, but uh, uh, maybe he doesn't uh, need to see a lot of uh, shades and colors and sparkling uh, stars. Okay, but obviously you can add sparkling stars yeah. if you want. So what yeah, what I want yeah. to say is that you can do whatever you want. Okay, thanks to the HTML and CSS, you can do whatever you want. In fact, we added a very particular cockpit. Uh, sorry, very particular widget that is the HTML widget, and is, this widget enables you to do whatever you wish in the HTML world. So, for example, maybe you want to create your cockpit the dashboard to visualize the number of your uh, social media videos, okay? Uh, and maybe you wish to embed your YouTube uh, video. Uh, thanks to this uh, widget, HTML widget, obviously you can embed into your dashboard directly the YouTube video without uh, the necessity to upload the video and whatever. Obviously, uh, behind this, uh, you have to uh, build your own whitelist of URL that are enabled to, to, to go into your dashboard. Uh, then obviously you have the chart widget in which you can insert uh, uh, many kind of charts uh, you wish, um, and also in these kind of widget you can customize uh, many things. Uh, then you have some uh, particular widget about tables, so you have the normal tables or the cross tables. Let me say just like the pivot, uh, and then you have two interesting widgets that are. Um, selector widget and uh, uh, selection widget. So with the selection widget, you will be able to always see um, what are the filters that you applied to these uh, uh, dashboard and cockpit uh, uh, thanks to your click, okay? Because obviously your all cockpit will be uh, interactive. So many times uh, you start to see uh, your data and to work it with your data, uh, but uh, uh, many, many times you find yourself lost into your data navigation, let me say. And once you find the the insight, you don't remember where uh, you are, let me say, how many filters you have applied and whatever. So thanks to the selector selection widget, uh, you can see the active selections. And uh, uh, the other one is the selector widget that enables you to set up uh, many kind of filters that will be um, shown 
as an output. So uh, that could be simply uh, some filters that are interactive and uh, uh, useful for the navigation you wish uh, to go to give to the to the end user. Uh, the cool part is that uh, all of these uh, uh, cockpits are um, could be uh, linked together, so you can have a cross navigation between documents. So, in mm -hmm. thanks to this uh, particular particular feature, uh, you, if you want, uh, are able to create uh, uh, a cockpit that acts uh, as an home page. So, uh, thanks to the HTML, you will uh, edit this uh, in a cool home page, and then you can, I don't know, uh, um, make this uh, uh, this particular chart uh, being a link for a more detailed uh, cockpit. So you click on this chart, and it, this will uh, link you to another. Uh, cockpit uh, with more details and more charts, uh, and you can go um, backward and frontward uh, uh, through uh, documents and cockpit. So the cross navigation is very well used from our uh, user nowadays. Uh, then there is another interesting thing that is that fa the fact that in the cockpit you can create different sheets, uh, and the sheets will be correlated together. So once you click and filter into uh, one cockpit, uh, then you go to the other sheets and the uh, filter that you have applied on the first sheet um, will remain to the second sheet. So it will enable you to uh, faster your navigation into the data. Um, obviously, everything is embeddable, uh, so you can uh, click on the uh, embedding option and you will have uh, uh, an iframe that is will uh, it's very easy to to be embedded into some pages that you want to to show the the, the cockpit in. Okay, so the I mean, obviously, you mentioned that uh, you know you can you can embed or you can do the direct sort of HTML um, sort of creation for those people that want to go deep into it. But I'm guessing you know for those that are just getting started, there's also the ability to. You know, create a lot of the the standards drag and drop sort of widget, wizard driven widgets. Is that is that all correct? Yes, of course, uh, of course. Uh, once you start, uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, let me say basic things uh, already there. Uh, the mm -hmm. HTML is only to tell you that uh, if you want it cool, you can make it cooler by yourself. Let me say. <laughs> so you have to <laughs> no. Uh, let me say we have a lot of uh, colors and palettes and whatever, but. Uh, um, yeah, in this case, uh, I think Knowledge is different for, from uh, some other tools. Uh, Knowledge is not uh, born for B2C, let me say. Mm -hmm. So um, it gives you a lot of uh, uh, already done things, but uh, it uh, uh, particularly enables you to customize it for yourself. In fact, uh, uh, the vast majority of our users are users coming from OEM modules, so models. So uh, you try to choose a knowledge to embed knowledge into your system, into your product, into your service. So um, you want it customizable, you want to create your own charts, you want to create your own colors and whatever. So uh, if you start to use knowledge and you want only the um, to use it by, by default, uh, you can see a lot of things, but obviously thanks to the HTML, you can uh, customize it as you wish. This is the concept. Nice, nice. So, I mean, for, for someone that sort of finds this, uh, you know, listens to this podcast and, and thinks, oh, this, this sounds interesting, is there any sort of advice you would give people when they're first starting to use, um, you know, some of the knowledge modules? Is there anything that, you know, people maybe um, don't always understand initially? Any sort of uh, tips and tricks you'd suggest? Yes, of course. I strongly suggest to watch the uh, install videos because uh, I saw that uh, since, uh, as I told you, this is a B2C uh, software, uh, maybe once you install it, uh, you risk to, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, don't set up in a good way the environment. But I can mm -hmm. tell you that inside the documentation and the videos, there is everything you have to do to set it up properly. And uh, obviously, if you don't look at this video and documentation, maybe you can uh, miss um, maybe a variable of your environment. And obviously, uh, it's uh, difficult to set it up. Uh, but uh, please uh, go to the documentation and videos uh, mm. that will tell you uh, how to do it. And don't worry about uh, writing as a, dropping as a mail. Uh, we will help you for sure. 
perfect this is the only the only advice yeah yeah no that's good so i'm curious the the sort of the people that um that typically sort of end up using knowledge i mean is there a typical business profile or i mean is it engineers is it scientists is it is it just kind of bi analysts you know what or is it all of the above uh, what I saw is that uh, nowadays, uh, since uh, uh, data and artificial intelligence and business analytics are in hype, uh, I saw a lot of different people uh, contacted as um, marketing managers, uh, BI user, uh, data scientist, and business manager. But uh, the uh, typical user that will really benefit from knowledge, I think it's uh, uh, the BI user or the data scientist because uh, they have the ability to understand the power between uh, um, behind knowledge, let me say, it really enables you to customize a lot and to, uh, let me say, um, raise the goal uh, you really wish to have, even because we are continuously trying to develop thanks to the community. So for example, if you are a BI user or a data scientist, uh, uh, you can really try to go into our community and help us uh, uh, develop more things and whatever. That's the, the cool part of the open source. Uh, instead, obviously, if you are a marketing manager, uh, maybe uh, it's, uh, uh, let me say, a little bit harder for you to understand, uh, uh, let me say, the differentiation between knowledge and some other tools. So maybe you will uh, prefer uh, other tool that maybe uh, enables you to uh, do something in an easier way, but uh, with less potential. But don't worry, let me say, because uh, knowledge is born to uh, fill the gap between the IT and the end user. So except the first part of the installation, once you set up your data sources uh, into your company, uh, you will be able to really give the power of BI to all of your end user managers and uh, marketing managers and whatever. I just uh, came from the open source uh, Paris Open Source Summit uh, and uh, Mm -hmm. my speech was uh, particularly about this. So it was about uh, uh, how to help uh, if you are a BI user, how to help your colleague to uh, benefit from the BI and business analytics uh, without uh, uh, the necessity for them to ask to uh, code something, ask to the IT manager and whatever. And knowledge is born for that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so, I mean, you mentioned the, the, the sort of the community and some of the development that's happening in the community. Um Sort of what for 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 people that that find this interesting and you know dip their toes in and and think they'd like to maybe uh, contribute. What are the areas that uh, that are easiest for people to to get into and involve? Uh, all the testing, all the testing, because uh, we really wish to to give the community addition to as much people as possible uh, to help uh, BI people in the world. Let me say so mm-hmm. as much test we have uh, as much we can try to fix things and whatever because um, we have uh, some community helper that are developers but obviously uh, if I have to choose obviously because you can contribute in whatever you wish but if I have to choose I think that obviously it's harder to uh, help us in the uh, deep technical development because you have to know knowledge or Spago BI and whatever so uh, if you go now to the licensing part of Noe's website, uh, you can see in the end of the uh, community edition page uh, on the bottom, you can see the list of contributors. And there are a lot of contributors, but uh, uh, all of these come from uh, sometimes on Noe's. Uh, they, 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 they used to be in Noe's and Spago BI for years. So they are able to help us in the development. Uh, obviously, if you want to help us, you can contribute in the development, but if if you really want to help us in a faster way, the best thing is to help us in the testing things. So once you find uh, an issue, you can signal it, uh, you can tell us. And to do this, there is the uh, community. Uh, you can go to the resources and free support 
into the page, uh, the web page of Knowledge, and you will find the Q and A page that is the community. And over there, you can see a lot of uh, uh, questions and issues and whatever. So if you use the Q and A page and uh, help the other people and uh, uh, tell us about uh, every issues or whatever you can find, this is the best way you can help us nowadays. Obviously, if you are a developer, you can also develop, but it's difficult. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It requires an in-depth knowledge of the code base to be uh, yeah, to be yeah, a little bit in many cases. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little so, bit. So, I mean, if you had to pick, um, you know, say the the top three things that um, that you know why people should take a look at, at Knowage, um, you know, what would you what would you suggest? What would you recommend people kind of think of as the differentiating differentiating factors here? Uh, the first one, obviously, is the open source uh, uh, <laughs> characteristic yeah. because it enables you to go deep into the code and embed it into your project. Uh, this is the first thing for sure. Then uh, there, is, there is behind uh, Knowledge um, a very long uh, experience in the BI world. We have a team that is very, very well passionate about BI and 2004 is not uh, yesterday, as I mentioned. So the uh, knowledge of the team and uh, uh, the freshness of the project because uh, this project is born to uh, be agile for you. So uh, as I told you, maybe uh, as a first look, it could not seem to be, uh, uh, let me say, user-friendly for, for a B2C, but it's very, very powerful once you dig into this. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you have uh, some sort of case studies. I mean, who, who are some of your, your fl the flagship organizations that are already gaining benefits from uh, using Knowledge? Yes. I, in, instead of talking about an organization, because I'm not uh, able to tell you uh, who they are, but I can mm -hmm. tell you something about this business case that I love, because it's uh, not only about Knowledge. So, uh, yeah, Noise is involved in, but it's a cool project, uh, even for the big data people of the, your audience. Uh, it's a project that is called uh, Dive, D-I-V-E, and it's mm -hmm. about uh, uh, predictive maintenance. We did it with Comau, that is one of the best uh, uh, worldwide uh, company about robotics. And uh, we did it for uh, the um, automotive market. So our our ca our case is about one automotive uh, uh, customer, but obviously I, I can't tell you uh, who they are, but it's a very, very big uh, automotive uh, producer uh, company. Um, the problem they had uh, is, is that they wanted to uh, skip from uh, a monitoring uh, environment to a, a predictive environment. So they wanted to see, um, uh, we are talking about the robots that are building the cars, the cars okay? Mm -hmm. uh, these robots are very, very important because you can see, uh, you can imagine that uh, once uh, one of these robots uh, may be uh, break, um, Obviously, it's a, it's a problem for the whole uh, uh, factory, okay? You lost a lot of uh, many, many uh, money every second, okay? So maybe you want to know when this uh, robot uh, may uh, be uh, broken or whatever and act on the maintenance in the best moment for you. So this project uh, is a project that uh, it was born with a full stack open source that is the, the good part, in my opinion, because it, uh, it used, uh, uh, it's used uh, raw data, then it's used, uh, um, it was used uh, Cloudera for the big data cluster, then Python mm -hmm. and Spark for the anomaly detection and predictive modeling, and then Knowledge on top as a risk benefit analysis and uh, visualizations and whatever. Obviously, since uh, it was a full stack open source, it's also modular. So now um, the, the good part is that uh, if you don't wish to use, uh, um, obviously, if you don't wish to use Cloudera, you can use Ortoworks. If you don't wish to use Python, you can use R. But the cool part was that uh, um, this whole very, uh, very massive uh, project about predictive maintenance uh, was done with full stack open source. So it's... Uh, a good uh, um, example on uh, how the open source uh, is really uh, an enabler for real project and not only for testing and uh, and research um, 
uh, project. Uh, the the okay. project was about uh, uh, data preparation with clustering and classification and whatever. Then they used the uh, let me say forecasting uh, um, um, forecasting step using uh, dimensionality reduction, uh, uh, statistical models, and neural networks. Uh, and they uh, used uh, naive meters and self-organized map for uh, uh, enabling uh, uh, the visualization of knowledge to show uh, to the company manager when uh, it was the good the good time to stop the factory and do the maintenance. Uh, to waste less money, let me say. Because as, as you yeah. know, every time you, you stop the factory, you are losing money. So uh, when is the right moment to stop these uh, particular robots uh, to do the maintenance uh, uh, because I want to avoid the, the broke up. So I think this this is a, a good use, use case. And, uh, and it's also obviously big data because uh, you can imagine, imagine how much data can come from uh, the whole robots of the whole world of the... Uh, production of the automotive world so perfect so i think we are probably getting close to uh running out of time so before we before we do yeah. wind up is there uh is there anything else that you'd like to add anything else that uh, you think the audience should know mm, i think we said a lot of things and i thank you a lot for this uh for this uh, um, opportunity uh, yeah, what I just want to say is that um, take a look at Knowledge if you want, and uh, if you want to contribute uh, to the community, we are here and we love to expand the community as much as we can because we love open source. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. So the the one last thing I would ask is that uh, we uh, we ask our guests uh, all to do one thing um, before they before they sign off, which is uh, in sort of uh, you know one or two sentences. How would you define Hadoop um, to someone that had never heard of it before? Oh come on, very <laughs> difficult question for me. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, the best support uh, you can have for the big data world uh, if you if you would like to stay in the open source world. Uh, and even if you're not in the open source, I think it's uh, the best in the, in, the, in, in any case. Uh, and it's uh, a framework uh, in which you can find support for your uh, uh, big data uh, issues, let me say. <laughs> I like Perfect. it. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. But I'm not good. technical, so... <laughs> That's never a problem. No problem. <laughs> so, I mean, Paolo, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for educating us about uh, about Knowledge, and uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, maybe having a follow on session with one of your technical colleagues, and we can go into some some more depth about how this works, the the exact data sources we can integrate with, and other fun questions. So, thanks for your of time. Course. Really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to hearing from you again soon. Thanks, Paolo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. So thanks again to uh, Paolo for giving us a schooling on knowledge. (laughs) And uh, really great to understand a bit more about the project. And if you're interested, there will, of course, be links in the show notes to to the knowledge suite. And you can go and download it, take a look at it for yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. Anything else from you? Uh, no, I think I'm all knowledge out. In that case, that is about all the time we have for today. Hope you enjoyed the serving of bite-sized big data. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Uh, but until then, please go to www.roaringelephant.org where you can find more information, including a feedback form. You can follow us on Twitter using the at Hadoopcast tag and contact us by email to podcast at roaringelephant.org with any thoughts, comments, criticisms and other feedback until then my name is dave and my name is john and we look forward to talking to you next week see you then (laughs) 